Welcome to the Corporate Learning Network videocast. I'm Jeff Cattell. Today I have with me Thomas Waddell Waddellsberg, co-author of Innovation as Usual, How to Help Your People Bring Great Ideas to Life. He's also a lecturer of managing people and organizations at IESE Business School. Thomas will be one of the keynote speakers at this year's Corporate Learning Week, November 12th through the 15th at Disney's Yacht Club Resort in Orlando, Florida. Thomas, welcome to the program. Thanks a lot, Jeff. So just getting started, I'm wondering if you can explain to us what you'll be speaking about at this year's conference. Well, basically, uh, I'm going to talk a, bit, a little bit about my, my new book here, uh, which we released with the Harvard Business Press here this spring, and uh, I, which I believe that all of the participants are getting a copy of. And in essence, what, uh, what the book is about is really the challenge of leading innovation uh, as part of your everyday life in an organization. How can we, as, as chief learning officers, how can we help our managers become better at this challenge? That, that's the essence of the book, and that's why we call it innovation as usual instead of going about business as usual. And one of, and one of the things you mentioned, I know, in the book is this idea of being an innovation architect. So in most corporations today, how do leaders see the role in the company? I think we see two variations, uh, the leaders we work with, intuitively, they either shy away from innovation to an extent, uh, you know, when, when saddled with the daily work, they kind of go, oh, can we really make this happen as well? Or you see a subset that, that embraces it uh, very enthusiastically, but on a personal level where they think, this is my chance to become creative, uh, to shine. And I think we are talking about the leaders and innovation architect to point out that there's there's an important role here, which is really about helping other people innovate. Uh, that's, you know, as leaders, what we do is we create results through other people. And that goes for innovation as well. How can you become what we call an innovation architect, creating an environment, creating uh, the conditions that are necessary for people to innovate as part of their daily jobs? And I know one of the things you talk about, too, is this idea that leaders try to jumpstart innovation through a variety of ways. So one of the ways is, you know, having corporate retreats or ha bringing a motivational speaker into the office. But those are pretty succinct and singular time periods to try to spark that innovation. So how do, do leaders go about creating that sustainable and systematic innovation? We talk about the need to uh, what we call escape from Brainstorm Island. And Brainstorm Island is really this, you know, the, the two-day fantastic uh, uh, innovation-themed uh, uh, offsite. That's great, but what we found with most of our managers is really that the challenge isn't to get the two days right, it's, it's to get the other 363 days of the year. How do we foster innovation there? And I think our experience has been that's where the workshops and the very flamboyant kind of, hey, now we'll get creative, can actually backfire a bit because it also teaches people that innovation is very different from what we do every day, and that's dangerous. Yeah, another thing you mentioned, too, is one of the things that I know that learning and training leaders are very focused on is, uh, is employee behavior and how to make that a more positive, sort of cohesive environment. And, and one of the things that I think people look at is almost exclusively, as you mentioned in your book, is personalities. So the environmental factors really get overlooked. So how do you suggest learning and training leaders in their position in the company work to help improve those environmental factors? I think it's one of the most um, you know, positive and, uh, developments we've seen in the learning and development space recently is this shift from saying innovation is about thinking differently to innovation is about acting differently. And so the question becomes how do we help people act differently as part of their daily lives? And you can, of course, fundamentally there's, there's two different approaches. You can, you can try to affect who they are through training, uh, through inspiration and so on. And that part we, we're fairly good at. What we're often missing out on is a very powerful other element in terms of affecting behavior, and that's really the environment that they work in. Is there a way to change uh, the environment instead of trying to think that all change needs to go through the, the mindsets or the heads of the people we work with? That's really the gist of this, and this is why we talk about innovation architecture, creating that environment. Great, great. I know one of the things you speak about in the book, too, is this five plus one types of behavior. 
and uh, that you sort of advocate as, as being a more innovative workplace or how to jumpstart a more innovative workplace. And one of the things you mention is focus. And I know that, you know, when people think of innovation, they sometimes think just like, let creativity abound, right? Like throw anything at the wall and see what sticks. But you're suggesting that people really need to be able to focus still. So how do you sort of strike that balance between having employees focus on something specific while also allowing them to be creative and innovative? Uh, we found that um, a lot of managers think that innovation is about giving people freedom. Uh, and that can work well if you're in an R&D department or you, know, you work with basic research uh, where the time horizons are long. The problem with freedom is that it's, it runs a great risk of not zooming in on the areas that are critical to the business. And what we've seen in our research and following uh, managers driving innovation and succeeding with it, it's really that they were very directive action and going in and saying to their people, this is an area we'd like you to focus on. If you can find ideas here, we know it will matter to the business. Uh, that process, like training our managers in the ability to focus innovation and to, to direct and guide the search for new ideas, that tends to be very, very powerful. And it has, you know, I'm going to be talking more about this at the conference, but it has the added benefit that it doesn't cost anything. If, if the barrier really is that we need more time and money for innovation, well, that can be a, a hard barrier to deal with. But giving people guidance, that's something we can do if only we can give people the tools how to do it. That makes a lot of sense. All right, now, before I let you go, I want to see what are you most excited about at this year's conference? I think I'm just tremendously excited about the, this is a space that I'm seeing going through a tremendous shift at the moment. Uh, I see a lot of interesting companies that, that have really understood this thing about not just going for, oh, let's inspire people, but really how do we drive change into the daily behavior of what people do. And I'm so, I'm so excited to see the, the, the list of fantastic speakers that are there. Uh, I'll be speaking, but I will be sitting in the rest of the seminar as well and, and listening intently. So that's going to be great, I think. Great, great. Well, thanks, Thomas. That was Thomas Waddell Waddellsberg, author and lecturer at IESE Business School. For more information on Thomas or the other speakers at this year's Corporate Learning Week, you can download a full agenda by clicking the Download Now button below. Thanks for watching.